Captain William Kidd was a Scottish sailor who was tried and executed for piracy after returning from a voyage to the Indian Ocean. Some modern historians deem his piratical reputation unjust, as there is evidence that Kidd acted only as a privateer. Kidd's fame springs largely from the sensational circumstances of his questioning before the English Parliament and the ensuing trial. His actual depredations on the high seas, whether piratical or not, were both less destructive and less lucrative than those of many other contemporary pirates and privateers. Biography Captain William Kidd was either one of the most notorious pirates in the history of the world, or one of its most unjustly vilified and prosecuted privateers, in an imperialistic age's rationalizations of empire. Despite the legends and fiction surrounding this character, his actual career was punctuated by only a handful of skirmishes, followed by a desperate quest to clear his name. Kidd was born in Dundee, Scotland, January 1645. He gave the city as his place of birth and said he was aged 41, in testimony under oath at the High Court of the Admiralty in October 1695 or 1694. Researcher Dr. David Dobson later identified his baptism documents from Dundee in 1645. His father was Captain John Kide, who was lost at sea. A local society supported the family financially. Richard Zacks, in the biography The Pirate Hunter, says Kidd came from Dundee. Reports that Kidd came from Greenock have been dismissed by Dr. Dobson, who found neither the name Kidd nor Kide in baptismal records. The myth, that his father was thought to have been a Church of Scotland minister, is also discounted. There is no mention of the name in comprehensive Church of Scotland records for the period. A contrary view is presented here. Kidd later settled in the newly anglicized New York City. It was here that he befriended many prominent colonial citizens, including three governors. There is some information that suggests he was a seaman's apprentice on a pirate ship, much earlier than his own more famous seagoing exploits. By 1689 he was a member of a French-English pirate crew that sailed in the Caribbean. Kidd and other members of the crew mutinied, ousted the captain of the ship, and sailed to the British colony of Nevis. There they renamed the ship Blessed William. Kidd became captain either the result of an election of the ship's crew or because of appointment by Christopher Codrington, governor of the island of Nevis. Captain Kidd and Blessed William became part of a small fleet assembled by Codrington to defend Nevis from the French, with whom the English were at war. In either case, he must have been an experienced leader and sailor by that time. As the governor did not want to pay the sailors for their defensive services, he told them they could take their pay from the French. Kidd and his men attacked the French island of Marigalanti, destroyed the only town, and looted the area, gathering for themselves something around £2,000 sterling. During the War of the Grand Alliance, on orders from the provinces of New York and Massachusetts, Kidd captured an enemy privateer, which duty he was commissioned to perform off the New England coast. Shortly thereafter, Kidd was awarded a £150 for successful privateering in the Caribbean. One year later, Captain Robert Califord, a notorious pirate, stole Kidd's ship while he was ashore at Antigua in the West Indies. In 1695, William III of England replaced the corrupt Governor Benjamin Fletcher, known for accepting bribes of $100 to allow illegal trading of pirate loot with Richard Coote, Earl of Bellamont. In New York City, Kidd was active in the building of Trinity Church, New York. On May 16, 1691, Kidd married Sarah Bradley Coxoot, an English woman in her early twenties, who had already been twice widowed and was one of the wealthiest women in New York, largely because of her inheritance from her first husband. Equals preparing his expedition equals. On December 11, 1695, Bellamont, who was now governing New York, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire, asked the trusty and well-beloved Captain Kidd to attack Thomas Tew, John Ireland, Thomas Wake, William Mays, and all others who associated themselves with pirates, along with any enemy French ships. This request, if turned down, would have been viewed as disloyalty to the Crown, the perception of which carried much social stigma, making it difficult for Kidd to have done so. The request preceded the voyage which established Kidd's reputation as a pirate, 
and marked his image in history and folklore. Four-fifths of the cost for the venture was paid for by noble lords, who were among the most powerful men in England, the Earl of Orford, the Baron of Romney, the Duke of Shrewsbury and Sir John Summers. Kidd was presented with a letter of Mark, signed personally by King William III of England. This letter reserved 10% of the loot for the crown, and Henry Gilbert's The Book of Pirates suggests that the king may have fronted some of the money for the voyage himself. Kidd and an acquaintance, Colonel Robert Livingston, orchestrated the whole plan and paid for the rest. Kidd had to sell his ship Antigua to raise funds. The new ship, Adventure Galley, was well suited to the task of catching pirates. Weighing over 284 tons burthen, she was equipped with 34 cannon, oars, and 150 men. The oars were a key advantage as they enabled Adventure Galley to maneuver in a battle when the winds had calmed and other ships were dead in the water. Kidd took pride in personally selecting the crew, choosing only those he deemed to be the best and most loyal officers. As the Adventure Galley sailed down the Thames, Kidd unaccountably failed to salute a Navy yacht at Greenwich, as custom dictated. The Navy yacht then fired a shot to make him show respect, and Kidd a Euro unregistered trademark S crew responded with an astounding display of impudence a Euro by turning and slapping their backsides in, disdain. Because of Kidd's refusal to salute, the Navy vessel's captain retaliated by pressing much of Kidd's crew into naval service, this despite rampant protests. Thus shorthanded, Kidd sailed for New York City, capturing a French vessel en route. To make up for the lack of officers, Kidd picked up replacement crew in New York, the vast majority of whom were known and hardened criminals, some undoubtedly former pirates. Among Kidd's officers was his quartermaster, Hendrik van der Heule. The quartermaster was considered second in command to the captain in pirate culture of this era. It is not clear, however, if van der Heule exercised this degree of responsibility, because Kidd was nominally a privateer. Van der Heul is also noteworthy because he may have been African or of African-American descent. A contemporary source describes him as a small black man. If Van der Heul was indeed of African ancestry, this fact would make him the highest-ranking black pirate so far identified. Van der Heul went on to become a master's mate on a merchant vessel, and was never convicted of piracy. Equals hunting for pirates equals, in September 1696. Kidd weighed anchor and set course for the Cape of Good Hope. A third of his crew soon perished on the Kumoros due to an outbreak of cholera, the brand new ship developed many leaks, and he failed to find the pirates he expected to encounter off Madagascar. Kidd then sailed to the Strait of Bab el Mand at the southern entrance of the Red Sea, one of the most popular haunts of rovers on the pirate round. Here, he again failed to find any pirates. According to Edward Barlow, a captain employed by the English East India Company, Kidd attacked a Mughal convoy under escort by Barlow's East Indiamen, and was repelled. If the report is true, this marked Kidd's first foray into piracy. As it became obvious that his ambitious enterprise was failing, Kidd became understandably desperate to cover its costs. But, once again, he failed to attack several ships when given a chance, including a Dutchman and a New York privateer. Some of the crew deserted Kidd the next time Adventure Galley anchored offshore, and those who decided to stay on made constant open threats of mutiny. Kidd killed one of his own crewmen on October 30, 1697. While Kidd's gunner, William Moore, was on deck sharpening a chisel, a Dutch ship appeared in sight. Moore urged Kidd to attack the Dutchman, an act not only piratical but also certain to anger the Dutch-born King William. Kidd refused calling Moore a lousy dog. Moore retorted, If I am a lousy dog, you have made me so. You have brought me to ruin and many more. Kidd snatched up and heaved an iron-bound bucket at Moore. Moore fell to the deck with a fractured skull and died the following day. While 17th-century English admiralty law allowed captains great leeway in using violence against their crew, outright murder was not permitted. But Kidd seemed unconcerned, later explaining to his surgeon that he had good friends in England, that will bring me off for that. Equals accusations of piracy equals, acts of savagery on Kidd's part were reported by escaped prisoners, 
who told stories of being hoisted up by the arms and trapped with a drawn cutlass. On one occasion, crew members ransacked the trading ship Mary and tortured several of its crew members while Kidd and the other captain, Thomas Parker, conversed privately in Kidd's cabin. When Kidd found out what had happened, he was outraged and forced his men to return most of the stolen property. Kidd was declared a pirate very early in his voyage by a Royal Navy officer, to whom he had promised thirty men or so. Kidd sailed away during the night to preserve his crew, rather than subject them to Royal Navy impressment. On January 30, 1698, he raised French colors and took his greatest prize, an Armenian ship, the 400-ton Kyrda merchant, which was loaded with satins, muslins, gold, silver, an incredible variety of East Indian merchandise, as well as extremely valuable silks. The captain of Kyrda merchant was an Englishman named Wright, who had purchased passes from the French East India Company promising him the protection of the French crown. After realizing the captain of the taken vessel was an Englishman, Kidd tried to persuade his crew to return the ship to its owners, but they refused, claiming that their prey was perfectly legal, as Kidd was commissioned to take French ships, and that an Armenian ship counted as French, if it had French passes. In an attempt to maintain his tenuous control over his crew, Kidd relented and kept the prize. When this news reached England, it confirmed Kidd's reputation as a pirate, and various naval commanders were ordered to pursue and seize the said Kidd and his accomplices for the notorious piracies they had committed. Kidd kept the French passes of Kyrda Merchant, as well as the vessel itself. While the passes were at best a dubious defense of his capture, British Admiralty and Vice Admiralty courts heretofore had often winked at privateers' excesses into piracy, and Kidd may have been hoping that the passes would provide the legal fig leaf that would allow him to keep Kyrda Merchant and her cargo. Renaming the seized merchantman Adventure Prize, he set sail for Madagascar. On April 1, 1698, Kidd reached Madagascar. Here he found the first pirate of his voyage, Robert Califord, and his crew aboard Mocha Frigate. Two contradictory accounts exist of how Kidd reacted to his encounter with Califord. According to the General History of the Pirates, published more than 25 years after the event by an author whose very identity remains in dispute, Kidd made peaceful overtures to Califord, he drank their captain's health, swearing that he was in every respect their brother, and gave Califord a present of an anchor and some guns. This account appears to be based on the testimony of Kidd's crewmen Joseph Palmer and Robert Bradenham at his trial. The other version was presented by Richard Zacks in his 2002 book The Pirate Hunter, the true story of Captain Kidd. According to Zacks, Kidd was unaware that Califord had only about twenty crew with him, and felt ill-manned and ill-equipped to take Mocha Frigate until his two prize ships and crews arrived, so he decided not to molest Califord until these reinforcements came. After Adventure Prize and Ruparel came in, Kidd ordered his crew to attack Califord's Mocha Frigate. However, his crew, despite their previous eagerness to seize any available prize, refused to attack Califord and threatened instead to shoot Kidd. Zax does not refer to any source for his version of events. Both accounts agree that most of Kidd's men now abandoned him for Califord. Only thirteen remained with Adventure Galley. Deciding to return home, Kidd left the Adventure Galley behind, ordering her to be burned because she had become worm-eaten and leaky. Before burning the ship, he was able to salvage every last scrap of metal, such as hinges. With the loyal remnant of his crew, he returned to the Caribbean aboard the Adventure Prize. Equals trial and execution equals. Prior to returning to New York City, Kidd learned that he was a wanted pirate, and that several English men of war were searching for him. Realizing that Adventure Prize was a marked vessel, he cashed it in the Caribbean Sea and continued toward New York aboard a sloop. He deposited some of his treasure on Gardner's Island, hoping to use his knowledge of its location as a bargaining tool. Kidd found himself in Oyster Bay, as a way of avoiding his mutinous crew who gathered in New York. In order to avoid them, Kidd sailed 120 miles around the eastern tip of Long Island, then doubling back 90 miles along the Sound to Oyster Bay. He felt this was a safer passage than the highly trafficked narrows between Staten Island and Brooklyn. Bellamont was away in Boston, Massachusetts. Aware of the accusations against Kidd, 
Bellamont was justifiably afraid of being implicated in piracy himself, and knew that presenting Kidd to England in chains was his best chance to save himself. He lured Kidd into Boston with false promises of clemency, then ordered him arrested on July 6, 1699. Kidd was placed in stone prison, spending most of the time in solitary confinement. His wife, Sarah, was also imprisoned. The conditions of Kidd's imprisonment were extremely harsh, and appear to have driven him at least temporarily insane. By then, Bellamont had turned against Kidd and other pirates, writing that the inhabitants of Long Island were a lawless and unruly people protecting pirates who had settled among them. He was eventually sent to England for questioning by Parliament. The new Tory ministry hoped to use Kidd as a tool to discredit the Whigs who had backed him, but Kidd refused to name names, naively confident his patrons would reward his loyalty by interceding on his behalf. There is speculation that he probably would have been spared had he talked. Finding Kidd politically useless, the Tory leaders sent him to stand trial before the High Court of Admiralty in London, for the charges of piracy on high seas and the murder of William Moore. Whilst awaiting trial, Kidd was confined in the infamous Newgate Prison, and wrote several letters to King William requesting clemency. Kidd had two lawyers to assist in his defence. He was shocked to learn at his trial that he was charged with murder. He was found guilty on all charges. He was hanged on May 23, 1701, at Execution Dock, Hopping, in London. During the execution, the hangman's rope broken kid was hanged on the second attempt. His body was gibbeted over the River Thames at Tilbury Point a euro as a warning to future would-be pirates a euro for three years. His associates Richard Barleycorn, Robert Lamley, William Jenkins, Gabriel Loff, Abel Owens, and Hugh Parrott were also convicted, but pardoned just prior to hanging at execution dock. Kidd's Whig backers were embarrassed by his trial. Far from rewarding his loyalty, they participated in the effort to convict him by depriving him of the money and information which might have provided him with some legal defence. In particular, the two sets of French passes he had kept were missing at his trial. These passes resurfaced in the early 20th century, misfiled with other government papers in a London building. These passes call the extent of Kidd's guilt into question. Along with the papers, many goods were brought from the ships and soon auctioned off as pirate plunder. They were never mentioned in the trial. As to the accusations of murdering Moore, on this he was mostly sunk on the testimony of the two former crew members, Palmer and Bradenham, who testified against him in exchange for pardons. A deposition Palmer gave when he was captured in Rhode Island two years earlier, contradicted his testimony and may have supported Kidd's assertions, but Kidd was unable to obtain the deposition. A broadside song Captain Kidd's Farewell to the Seas, or, The Famous Pirate's Lament was printed shortly after his execution and popularized the common belief that Kidd had confessed to the charges. Mythology and legend, the belief that Kidd had left buried treasure contributed considerably to the growth of his legend. The 1701 broadside song Captain Kidd's Farewell to the Seas, or, The Famous Pirate's Lament lists 200 bars of gold, and Rick's dollars manifold, we seized uncontrolled. This belief made its contributions to literature in Edgar Allan Poe's The Gold Bug. Washington Irving's The Devil and Tom Walker. Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island and Nelson de Mille's Plum Island. It also gave impetus to the constant treasure hunts conducted on Oak Island in Nova Scotia, in Suffolk County, Long Island, in New York where Gardner's Island is located, Charles Island in Milford, Connecticut, the Thimble Islands in Connecticut, Kokeno Island in Westport, Connecticut, and on the island of Grand Manon in the Bay of Fundy. Captain Kidd did bury a small cache of treasure on Gardner's Island in a spot known as Cherry Tree Field. However, it was removed by Governor Bellamont and sent to England to be used as evidence against Kidd. Kidd also visited Block Island around 1699, where he was supplied by Mrs. Mercy Raymond, daughter of the mariner James Sands. The story has it that, for her hospitality, Mrs. Raymond was bid to hold out her apron into which Kidd threw gold and jewels until it was full. After her husband Joshua Raymond died, 
Mercy moved with her family to northern New London, Connecticut, where she bought much land. The Raymond family was thus said to have been enriched by the apron. On Grand Manon in the Bay of Fundy, as early as 1875, reference was made to searches on the west side of the island for treasure allegedly buried by Kidd during his time as a privateer. For nearly 200 years, this remote area of the island has been called Money Cove. In 1983, Cork Graham and Richard Knight went looking for Captain Kidd's buried treasure off the Vietnamese island of Fair Quay C. Knight and Graham were caught, convicted of illegally landing on Vietnamese territory, and assessed each a $10,000 fine. They were imprisoned for 11 months until they paid the fine. Cured a merchant found, for years, people and treasure hunters have tried to locate Cured a merchant. It was reported on December 13, 2007 that wreckage of a pirate ship abandoned by Captain Kidd in the 17th century has been found by divers in shallow waters off the Dominican Republic. The waters in which the ship was found were less than 10 feet deep and were only 70 feet off Catalina Island, just to the south of La Romana on the Dominican coast. The ship is believed to be the remains of Cured a merchant. Charles Beaker the director of academic diving and underwater science programs in Indiana University's School of Health, Physical Education, and Recreation, was one of the experts leading the Indiana University diving team. He said that it was remarkable that the wreck has remained undiscovered all these years given its location, and given that the ship has been the subject of so many prior failed searches. Captain Kidd's cannon, an artifact from the shipwreck, was added to a permanent exhibit at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis in 2011. Treasure found, in May 2015, a 50 kilogram silver ingot was found in a wreck off the coast of La Saint Marie in Madagascar by a team led by marine archaeologist Barry Clifford, and was believed to be part of Captain Kidd's treasure. Clifford handed the booty to Harry Rajayanara Mampianina, president of Madagascar. However, in July 2015 a UNESCO scientific and technical advisory body speculated that the wreck in question might be a broken part of the St. Marie port constructions. In popular culture, comics and animation, film, games, literature, music, other. See also, Captain Kidd's Cannon, Gardner's Island, Oak Island, Treasure Island. Notes and references, notes. References. Further reading, books. Articles. External links. Pirate's Legacy A Euro William Kidd, Captain Kidd Pub, What's in Whopping? Local Community Website, Skeptoid No. 481, Captain Kidd's Treasure at Skeptoid.